and cook it up. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to be limiting this uh, live stream to about 20 minutes. I had received a comment saying that I should keep my video shorter. Now I may not do this for all live streams, but I'm going to see because a lot of people may not be able to sit through an entire hour long video. So I'm going to do my best to keep this right around 20, 25 minutes at the most. And so can we make the holidays less lonely? Yeah, it's that time of year. And why might someone be alone and or lonely? Well, there are many reasons why. For starters, you may have military personnel who are overseas on deployment. And I'm gonna go back the other way. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. So whenever I come across other hikers, I'm just gonna kinda go silent. So bear with me. I'm just gonna wait till I pass these group of people and then I'll resume. Waiting for them to pass and then I will resume. Okay, so what I was saying is you may have military personnel who are overseas and they may be in a combat zone, or you may even have civilians who are doing contract work in a different part of the world or a different part of the country and they're not anywhere near family or friends. You may have someone that's just gotten a new job and they've had to relocate and they're new to wherever they're living at and they may not know anyone. Uh, Huh, busy trailer. One more. Okay, so uh, yeah, they may. If you don't know, if you're new to a city, yeah, you're probably not going to know anyone. Hey, grotesque, how you doing? Or you may have some circumstances that kind of make it difficult for you to get out there. And bear with me, I got this is a busy trailer. Uh, thank you, grotesque. I love you back. Okay. So, uh, what else? Or you may have some mental uh, struggles that you're working through that make it difficult to go out there and meet others. Or you may have uh, some kind of physical disability uh, that limits your ability to go out there and explore. There are a multitude of reasons why people may be alone and sometimes it can lead to loneliness. So, how can we, what can we do to make the holidays more inclusive of those who may be going solo at it. Well, there are keywords that kind of, this is why I don't like the holiday season, is because of these keywords. Gatherings, togetherness, friends and family. Now, if you listen to a lot of commercials, if you read like a lot of banners, a lot of brochures, they will, it's pretty much assumed that everyone has a family to to spend time with, or everyone has friends or a significant other to spend time with. And that's the problem. It's the assumption. And that can lead to feelings of loneliness. It can lead to feelings of shame because it's kind of like society dictating, well, it's, it's assumed that you have someone to spend the holidays with. So for instance, let me give you an example. So I saw this, I was having lunch today, and I saw this one advertisement, and it said, tease the season for togetherness. Let us cater to your gathering. And I'm thinking to myself, how could we better reword this so that we're including everyone, regardless if they're going solo or if they're going with other people. So here's how I would do it. I would put, tease the season for happiness. Let us cater to your needs. Or you can put, if you want to be political, correct about it, you can put Y-O-U-R and then a forward slash, slash S. That way you're including both uh, people who are maybe catered, wanting to, uh, to have catering for a gathering or maybe have catering to someone that's by themselves. So here's like how I would put a message as far as the holidays go. I would be like, it's the season of joy and happiness. It is a time to care and love for those who are in need. It is a time to look back over the year at our triumphs and our successes and even our failures and what we did to overcome our failures. And as we look ahead to 2024, let, us, let it be a more prosperous year. See, there's no togetherness, there's no family, there's no friends, it's inclusive, it's like, of everyone so i think if we were to 
include more messages like that through commercials, the media, I would, I would almost be willing to bet you would have a decline in feelings of loneliness, and you may even have uh, a decline in those who, who experience a form of uh, mental illness. I hate, it seems like that's an intense word, mental illness, but it's, it's a fact that I could be wrong, but I think one in three people, either throughout their lifetime or in a given year, I don't remember which one it was, one out of three people are going to experience some form of like mood disorder. That could be depression. That could be anxiety. One out of three people. And I think I remember hearing that one out of nine people are like on an antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication. So, yeah. So, the holidays, it's like, when you think of the holidays, you should just be thinking like, ho, 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 ho. Tease a season of happiness and joy. And just leave out everything else. Or tease a season to treat yourself, yourself or, your, or yourselves, meaning you're including everyone regardless of their situation. So yeah, I just kind of want to get that across that oftentimes it's those messages uh, it's those messages that we see in the media that can kind of influence how we feel and it can spike those feelings of loneliness. And I can't recall a lot. Hey, hey, you, hey, you, 368. Can you, he's, you is asking, can I, can I get a fade haircut? That's interesting because some people want me to grow my hair out longer. So I suppose I could do a combination. I'd go, hey, it looks like I got someone here. Yeah, yeah, so I got anyone else. I got, hey, hyd hydro fire. Hydro fire. Ah, yes, hydro fire. Holidays are times I want to be alone. Oh, yes. There are those who don't want to be with family, who don't want to be with other people. Because there are those stories of people who have bad experiences over the holidays. Maybe they have to spend time with an aunt or uncle or sister or brother-in-law or even like some parent they don't get along with. Yes, drama. That's, that's, there's always going to be some form of drama or maybe not always, but oftentimes you'll probably hear about it, some form of drama, whether it's like over the dinner table, over what gifts people got, so forth it's just so yeah a lot of times hey monster hey how you doing monster so yeah it's it's one of those things i think if we if we can like somehow kind of influence well i guess if the media like say like the media and like say like social media if they would like start targeting commercials to not use words of assumption that's what i would call i would call these words togetherness gathering friendship love family i would call those words the words of assumption during the holiday period because that's assuming everyone's got everyone has someone to spend time with which is you know especially these days it's not the case and so i'm thinking that i want to do a live stream where i kind of get your guys' opinion on is it possible that we are developing into a more solitary being that i think that would be a good topic of discussion because if we look back at our genetics if we look back at our ancestry we're like we're kind of like meant we're social we're social beings social creatures uh, from back from the hunting and gathering days and it seems like now we've got so much competition when it comes to like jobs even finding our soulmate so much competition out there that it seems like we're kind of becoming more individualized. So I have to wonder, like, in the long term, could we end up being a more solitary uh, being? Hey, Puppet Master, and we got Monster, thank you. I hope you enjoy it too. Luckily, I don't work on Christmas Day. I do not work Christmas Day. But I do work uh, on Sunday. And let's see what else. Uh, oh, 
Yeah, so there's another temp agency in, uh, in Bellingham. And supposedly I got a phone call from them this morning that they're looking for a contract position. It's three months, but it's for a business analyst. So that was kind of interesting. Another temp agency that had like my information on file. They called me this morning and they're like, yeah, yeah, we found it. We found an opportunity that you may be interested in. And so I basically forwarded my resume and so forth. And so the, if that were be if that were to be the case, and I and, and by chance I did get that position, I would work both I would work both my tax job and that business analyst job. Yes, I would work both job I would work both jobs because I need to save up some money because I really I really want to travel to a different country for at least a few weeks, sometime in the near future. I really want to go overseas, and so it would be nice to save up some money. So it looks like I got some comments here. Hey, Blake. Okay. Blake Stone, think before you sleep, had some good advice. He just has an annoying voice. Ah, yeah. I was about to, I was like thinking of that. I did watch uh, like the first 15 minutes of his video. Then I fast forward it to the section where he went over like my situation. And yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think it's supposed to be like a self-help channel or like a motivational channel. But yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, like I mentioned yesterday, the one thing I did not like was when he said that my name sounded like a child's name. That was really the only thing I didn't like about it, about what he had to say. But everything else was pretty pretty spot on. Uh, the word, as you can see, I am not wearing a tank top. Yep, I mean I have one underneath, but I'm wearing long sleeve because it's raining out. So yes, no tank top today. All right, so let's see what else. Uh, grotesque. Uh, yes, I'm also religious. Uh, I was raised Catholic. Uh, I would say I'm like, a, I would say I'm like, I am a combination of a Catholic agnostic, meaning I'm Catholic, but I also believe like spiritually, like that God is like energy. So I, I guess you could say it's like, if that's, if that's a thing, but yeah, I would say I'm uh, kind of like a cross between Catholic <laughs> and spirituality. I, I mean, I don't know, but yes, I am really, I am religious. So, okay. Let's see, I got some other, hey, BB. So, okay. Social media is making humans more solitary. I think, ironically. Yes, BB, you are so correct. Uh, social media, with how people are glued to their Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, yeah, I honestly feel that social media is actually making us more lonely and more solitary. Yes, I would have to agree with you on that. Now, it is interesting. I don't really have enough time to go too much into depth about this because, like I said, I want to try to keep this live stream to right around 20, 25 minutes. So I'll have to kind of keep that for another topic. My, the early days of social media, there was hope. There was like a lot of hope. I mean, I actually had when MySpace was around, uh, back in like 2006, I actually interact. I actually did video chats with a couple of women. I I had conversations with a few others. So it was really easy. It was really easy to message someone if your friend requested them. Uh, I think like out of everyone a friend requested, <laughs> I think it was like a 70% response back. But now these days it's completely different. Now people will think you're you're a creep or you're this or that. So yeah, social media has pretty much gone downhill as far as trying to bring us together. Which the whole purpose of social media in the beginning was to help us stay connected. So yes, that is ironic. Okay, let's see, I got some other comments here. Monster, you're tempted to hit the gym, but I always have some anxiety holding me back. Ah, uh, I know the feeling. When I used to, er, when I used to go to the gym at the very beginning, I was really self-conscious of how I looked because I was really skinny. And I know I haven't been hitting the gym lately because I'm trying to. I'm doing this Strava thing where I'm trying to see how much vertical I can get in one month, and I'm trying to see if I can get in the top ten in my age group. I, there's like some forty-five thousand people in my age group on this like Strava 
uh, how many vertical feet you can go running for the month of December. And right now I'm 10th overall. So I'm trying to see if I can maintain, maintain my position. So I really haven't been hitting the gym at all this month. Plus, I don't want to risk getting sick, especially COVID. COVID has been dropping people like flies around here. Half the people at my work have had COVID. Uh, one of my roommates, I think at his work, a lot of people have had COVID. So I, I'm trying to keep myself from getting sick. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see, who else do I have here? Let's see, we got Sci-Fi Man. Hey, Sci-Fi Master. And Simply Creative Robin. Yeah, MySpace was cool back in the day, but then I think it's, I think it's mostly a musician's platform now. I don't even think it's really used that much except by musicians. I don't even know what the status of Facebook is like these days. I've been on Facebook for almost two years. So I, I'm kind of curious what Facebook is like. So yeah, I would have to agree. Yeah, Blake Stone is saying, uh, think is off, think is off putting. He was ultimately positive in his message. Yeah, cause I mean, he could have, he could have probably been a lot more, how would I say, more critical. He could have easily been more critical, which I was expecting it to be a lot more like, kind of like a negative, critical, but no, I guess it was mostly just like, things are like, what I could do to improve on myself. So yeah, it, it was good to watch. Hey, Timothy Richards, thank you. Hey, or Thomas, Thomas Richards, sorry about that. Thomas Richards, for some reason I thought I saw, I saw Timothy. Thomas Richards says, keep doing what you do, bro. We are behind you, one, yes. Yes, and hydro fire. Your brain will create what, is your, what it is you're looking for. All right, hydro fire. Yep, we are energy. All right, STU is saying take one day at a time. And then let's see, Simply Creative Robin is saying Facebook is the worst. Well, I guess I won't be getting on Facebook anytime soon then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see, and then we got Gortez, Sci-Fi. Oh, yeah. BB is also mentioning something that social media can often make us do. It can make us compare ourselves to other people. So uh, let's say like, I remember when I was on Facebook, I would always see like all these posts of like people like, oh, look at us, oh, happily married in Spain, drinking our wine and looking at their like $50 or like their $100 plus uh, dinner plate <laughs> or seeing like, oh, look, at, we just bought, I just helped this young couple buy their first, first million dollar home. I'm just like, okay, I don't need to be seen. I don't need to be seeing that. Yeah, cause I was, I was Facebook friends with this one realtor and he's a, he, he's a pretty dang good realtor, but I would just kind of like his posts of like him, like showing the houses that he sold and the people that he sold to. I'm just like, no, I don't need to, I don't need to be seeing that. So yeah, it can make us compare ourselves to others. It can make us feel inferior. So social media is a beast in itself and it can be a, a negative beast. Okay. Hey, Louie. Hey, Louie, how you doing? And yes, Hydro, I'm Mur so yes. Well, YouTube is also social media, but it's also, it's what's cool about YouTube is it's got multiple purposes. It's almost becoming like a university kind of, because you can take all kind. you can take, you can pretty much learn a bunch of different skills. You can learn, a, not just like job related, but you can learn like how to survive in the wilderness, how to go out there and make your favorite dish, where to go and eat, where to go and travel, how to be safe when you're traveling, how to survive a hurricane, how to survive being attacked by a bear. What would you like? What will the world be like in a billion years? So many things on YouTube that YouTube is kind of in its own category. And it doesn't really have many competitors. I mean, yeah, you've got Vimeo and uh, you have Rumble. I don't know how popular Rumble is, but yeah, that's kind of with that. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so yes, and then BB is saying, uh, she uses Pinterest. 
Yeah, I've never really used Pinterest that much, but yeah. All right, so, hey, and we got Louie Louie. All right, guys. Thank you, BB. Hey, Uncle Teddy. Yeah, I hope you're, hope you're feeling better, Uncle Teddy. I know, I think the other day, you said you were feeling a little sick. So I hope you're feeling better. I know I'm trying to keep myself healthy. I'm kind of feeling some sniffles, but that could just be because of the cold weather. But I don't want to be getting sick because if I get sick, well then I'm not, I can't go to work and then I don't make any money. So I really don't want to be getting sick. So that's why I got to make sure that after I get done with my walk, I go home and have some hot lemonade with honey and keep myself hydrated. And then I got to somehow get myself some vitamin C and just kind of keep myself nice and hydrated and hopefully I won't get sick. Hey, JF. So yes, JF is saying that, yeah, it's kind of like, so JF's got a good point. It's just kind of like, a, you can appreciate, like, put it this way. If you've got no one to spend the holidays with, look at it this way. You've got the freedom to do what you want to do. You can eat what you want. You can you can go wherever you want. You can do what you want to do for however long you want to do. This almost reminds me of a video I tried to make a couple years back, but it was like the benefits of doing things alone. And I think I came up with like several different uh, uh, reasons. Like one, you can be spontaneous. You don't have to plan. Number two, you can be you can go at your own pace. Number three, you can go wherever you want to go. Number four. You don't have, you're not dictated by the other person's schedule and so forth. But, okay, hide or fire. <laughs> Sci-fi master, yes. Hey, Jordan Luke. So Jordan Luke is asking, what do you do when someone simply doesn't like you? Huh. It makes me, kind of, well, it kind of makes me ask myself, what is it that they don't like about me? But like I, uh, I haven't really encountered that really too much lately. The mo actually, the most I used to encounter that surprisingly was when I skied Alpental. Back when I used to ski Alpental uh, in my 20s, and even when I skied Alpental when I first came back from Pensacola, and those like the early, uh, like the middle 2010s, later 2010s, there were people that just didn't really seem to like me, or I couldn't break into their clique. So it kind of made me wonder, okay, what is it about, what is it about myself? What is it that they don't like about me? But I don't really, like I said, I don't, I'm not skiing at ski resorts for the time being. So I'm not too worried about it right now. So that's really the only experience I've had where I've come across people who just simply don't like me is most of the times it's when I was skiing at ski resorts. So amazingly enough, <laughs> ADW, thank you. Thank you, DW. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's see, I got a, oh, monster. How is the Python code going? Ah, interesting that you asked that. Ah, you're not gonna believe this, but I spent almost three hours last night after I had had my dinner, I spent nearly three hours last night trying to put together this uh, plot, uh, time series plot. And I had to like uh, group three different ca categories and I spent nearly three hours trying to figure how could I make this chart comparing three different, uh, three different categories. And I was finally able to pull it off. I was really happy about it. And it was, I'm using Python pandas is what I'm doing. I'm actually, for my portfolio project, I'm using a, uh, an LA crime data set that's looking at crime statistics from uh, January 1st, 2020, up to like the present time. And there's like over 850,000 rows of data. Each row is a crime incident. And it's like, it's representing like 20 different areas in the LA, in like the LA vicinity. So it's, it's an interesting project. So I'm using Python pandas to clean what they would call data cleaning and transforming your data. So I'm using Python pandas. So I would say my Python, 
my program is, go is going pretty good. So I hope that I answered yours. Let's see. Jordan Luke. Let's see. I know I had some comment. I know. Hey, Himini. So Himini is asking, would I usually buy a season's pass to a resort or buy a lift ticket each time? I would actually buy uh, a lift ticket. Uh, excuse me. A pass. Because a season's pass, for instance, at the area I skied out last year, Stevens Pass, they were selling season's passes. If you bought them early for like $730. $730. Now, now, that's a lot of money. However, if you wait to buy a lift ticket, lift tickets can cost up to $120. Sometimes up to $127. So with a season's pass, you can pay it off with seven to 10 visits to a ski resort. So if you know you're gonna be skiing at any resort more than say like 10 times, you wanna get yourself a season's pass. You will pay, you will get your money's worth. If, you know, if they're gonna like look at ski, uh, skiing a particular area or resort multiple times, figure out how much it would cost in buying lift tickets and then determine. Is it going to be cheaper to buy a pass or pay buy for, or buy tickets? Okay, so hey, get to rock. How you doing? Get to rock. Okay, let's see. And I know I had someone. I, I'm trying to look for a comment here. Agreed. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So it looks like I got so. Uh, looks like someone on here. Hey, Austin Bruiser. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well, Austin. And DW, thank you. Yeah, I think some, uh... oh yeah, so it looks like uh, Jordan's having uh, some uh, difficulty with his boss. Now, yeah, that's gotta be a challenge if you're working for someone who doesn't like you. That's gotta, that would have to be really awkward to work for someone and they don't like you. I mean, that, that's a, <laughs> that would be really, that would be really odd, yeah. But I hope, yeah, I hope the best for you. I hope, I hope things turn out better for you because, yeah, that's gotta be, that's gotta be, that's gotta be a challenge and that's gotta be difficult. Hey, wheels man, Merry Christmas. Hey. Yes, thank you, BB. We are glad we are all nice to one another on Christmas. And Christmas lay, lives, yes. So yeah, I am. Yeah, so that's the thing. So when we think of, it's funny. I know I said I was only gonna be on here for 20 to 25 minutes, but I think when I hit the 20 minute mark on the video, I was only like at 13 viewers. And now when I'm like at 20 to 25 minutes, I'm like 33, 36 viewers. So. It's a balancing act, guys. Trying to figure out how long I should make my live streams before people like tune out of them. But it's a live stream. That's the. It's a live stream is one thing where I can't really be like, oh, I'm gonna be on here for only 10 minutes, and then next thing you know, let's say I have 50 viewers and be like, oh, I gotta go, guys. But I think if I'm doing a standalone video by itself, if I'm just like, say, I'm gonna make a video on. Let me give an example. Uh, how to survive if you're locked inside the freezer. Well, I could probably do that in like three minutes, maybe even less. Or if I'm saying, what are the benefits to exercise? I could probably make a five or six minute video on that. But as far as a live stream goes, I think that's just kind of one of those things where once I get into the flow of things, especially like when I'm out here, and I'm getting myself more vertical for the day. I just kind of got to be like, oh, well, you know, I do have a, I, sh I sh probably should keep a time limit, but I figure at the most, I'm not going to go too much longer because otherwise, yeah, it's going to get dark out here. As a matter of fact, it is getting pretty dark out here. And they always say the the, the most active time for cougars is dusk and dawn. And it's kind of getting towards that time. So I think now is a good time for me to turn around. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm just walking up kind of aimlessly 
And next thing you know, I'm gonna be like all the way up there. I kid you not. I, that, that's how in the zone I can sometimes get, especially like when I'm streaming, is I'll just keep walking and like in a half hour, I'll be like all the way up there. So I'm gonna turn around, <laughs> I'm gonna turn back around and head back down. <laughs> Cause I don't wanna be, <laughs> I don't wanna be up there. Yeah, I don't like being, yeah, it's dusk and dawn. Those are the times I'm kind of like, and especially like during this time of the day, I pretty much stay to a walk because let's say if there is a cougar, let's say there was a cougar watching me in there and I start running, that's gonna, uh, in, that's gonna initiate their prey instinct and they could chase me down. So it's always a good idea that if you're a runner or jogger and it's like around dusk or dawn, you might just wanna go down to a walking pace. But once it's like in the middle of the day, the sun's out, and especially like if you're in a wide open area, like this, this is pretty open, then you can go all out. But when you hit some, when you hit a treat area, you wanna be alert. You may wanna slow down a little bit. <laughs> so, but yeah, see like this is nice and wide open. There are actually mountain bike trails down there. So, so right now, I am about 600 feet above the water, 650 feet above the water. 600, 650 feet above the water. I have to, one of these times, I have to show you where I go, where I am almost four times the height. So I am looking at this lake from 2,400 feet above. It's pretty awesome. It's like, it's really cool. It almost feels like you can reach out over the lake. It almost seems like the lake is closer to you when you're up that high than it is from here. Cause here the lake looks like it's way out there. But from up where I go to, it feels like you can like reach out and the lake's like right there. It's, it's really cool. So, but that's for another day. I'm not gonna do that now. See how it's getting dark? See, it's getting dark in here. So yeah, this is, it's right around dusk guys. So I gotta be kind of, you know, I gotta be watchful. That's what I gotta do. I gotta be watchful because now I'm going into some trees. Oh yeah, that's an, oh, grotesque. It is an awesome view. And the view, so I'm surprised, like, I, uh, so six times this week, I went up 20, I went up to pretty much the very top. Very few people actually go to the very tip top. A lot of people, so right now, there's a trail, there's a trail turn off right here. This trail goes up to like that regular viewpoint. You guys have seen me stream from up there before many of times. That's the main viewpoint that people stop at. And that's the trail that goes up. It's the main viewpoint. You're about 1100 feet above the water, but most people stop there. A handful of people will go up to what's called the terminus. It's another two and a half miles up, but there's really nothing at the end. You just end up on a dirt road, no view, no nothing. Now, people will often either come back down the trail or they'll make a left and come down this road that I'm on right now. This is the Wick, this is known as the Wickersham uh, Trail. And people will make a left and they come back down this and they get the views of the lake from like 1,700 feet above 2,000 feet. But if you really want the kick, if you really want the kick butt views, when you get to the terminus, you make a right, you go to a gate, and then you make a, you make the first left, and that's where the views are. And I had a feeling if more people knew the view you had from way up there, it would become a lot more popular. <laughs> I mean, a lot more popular because it's probably it's. I I think it's even I think it's even more magnificent than the view you get from Oyster Dome. Oyster Dome is a pretty solid view, but the view you get from up here, if you go to the top, it's amazing. You can see almost the entire lake. You can pretty much see all of Bellingham. You can see uh, the Canadian mountains. So you have like a easy, like 180, almost a 270 degree view from up there. Okay, so it's starting to rain. It's getting pretty dark. Hey, Joey, Kenti hey, Kenneth Fairchild. That's the other thing too. This, this would be an awesome, so, yeah, so Kenneth Fairchild is saying, ride a dirt bike out there well actually motorized vehicles are prohibited on this trail but i wouldn't mind having a uh, a gravel bike like a, one of those like road bikes but more of a gravel bike and actually riding this trail 
because this would actually be a pretty fun trail to ride down. Okay. Hey, Johan Wilder. So, uh, Johan Wilder is asking, what's my primary motivation for pursuing the CPA path? Money, status, self-respect. I would have to say it's a combination of self-respect and money. But also, it's a combination of uh, path too. I would say it's a combination of all three. Now, someone left a very interesting comment that I read this morning. And they were mentioning that a lot of people uh, associate accounting with being a certified public accountant. There's actually, someone uh, mentioned accounting systems, which is like very analytical in nature. So I found that comment very useful and interesting because accounting, people think, oh, certified public accountant. But there's actually many different fields you can branch off with accounting. Uh, you can go into like uh, accounting analytics, accounting systems. You can be payroll clerk. You can be, uh, uh, let's see, a bookkeeper. Uh, let's see what else. I'm sure there's a lot of other positions that I'm probably not thinking of, but yeah, it's a lot of way, different ways you can branch off. And yes, I it's, it's funny too, because one of my favorite classes I took during my undergraduate was an accounting course. I took, I took an introductory accounting course and it was actually one of my favorite classes. So here are my two favorite classes that I took during like, and this is, I took these at a community college before I went to a four year. My two favorite classes that I took uh, was, a fi uh, actually my three favorite classes. My first was the, uh, the uh, statistics class. That was my favorite. My second favorite was the accounting class. And my third was the physics class. Those were my three favorite classes. And I actually enjoyed uh, math classes as well. I actually enjoyed taking math. I managed to get up to calculus one. I probably should have kept going. I stopped at calc, uh, calc two, but I did fine on calculus one. I was freaking three, three points away from scoring 100% on the final, which I think only one other student had ever scored 100 on this particular instructor's final. And I was like three points away because I, I blew a, but she said I blew a sign, meaning I put like a negative where it should have been a positive. Because of that, I missed getting that. Oh, so close. But so yeah, I really actually enjoyed math. Let's see. Actually, I got some comments. I got, see, I'm going to get some comments here. Let's see, I got Steve B. I like Steve B. Yes. If you do accounting, you definitely will get hired. Very few do the major. Not as easy as you think. No, it's one of my, actually one of my prior roommates was going to school for accounting. And yeah, he was pretty much like on his computer the, ent the entire time I saw him. Yeah, it's, it's pretty challenging, especially like if you're not really good with like, because I, I had the feeling accounting is probably a lot of uh, analytics involved, especially nowadays. There's more analytics involved in accounting than there probably was before. Ah, uh, see, Johan Wilder is asking, anyone want to take a guess what the highest paying job is, which only requires a two-year associate? Any guesses? I'm going to guess x-ray tech, radiology tech. I could be wrong, but is that is that the answer? Radiology tech? I wouldn't be surprised because there's like a two to three year waiting list to get into the program here. And at one of the at, at one of the community colleges, it's a two it's a two or three year waiting uh, wait, waiting list. Uh, let's see, software? No, it's not soft. Oh look, who, air, oh my God, air traffic controller. Yeah, but I can understand why that is. Air traffic controller, you are responsible for millions and millions of lives and thousands of thousands of lives every day air traffic controller okay yeah i would have never guessed that though i thought you need i wasn't sure but i would have never guessed air traffic controller but oh i'm sure they get paid well but the amount of stress i heard it's, it's one of those jobs where you can't be having a bad day you can't be like going in dragging your butt it's like because you can't be like uh, uh, yeah.
A runway 2FB, clear for landing. Uh, Alpha, Alpha 276, runway uh, F4, not clear for, <laughs> it's like, and you, the, another thing too is you have to be paying attention to multiple, like multiple frequencies, I think at the same time. So you're having to communicate and listen at the same time. <laughs> so I gotta, and actually one of, uh, one of my ski buddies during my teens and twenties, he's now a pilot, a commercial airline pilot. And he told me that even just like flying when you're flying and the fact that you have to be cons consistently like radioing to like uh, ground control, like the, the tra air traffic, <laughs> air traffic control people and so forth. He was telling me that even that it was like, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pushing my boundaries. Like meaning like, it's, it's a lot of focus. A lot of people think, oh, an airline pilot, nice, easy job. It's got to fly to plane. No, it's, you got to be able to cat. You got to be able to re uh, communicate with the air traffic control people. You got to communicate with other pilots. You got to be paying attention to your instruments. And plus you are, you're responsible for everyone on that plane. So it's, it's a huge responsibility. And it's like, yeah, it's like one of those things where it's like, You've got to, you definitely have to be really good at multitasking. And I mean like multitasking under, under pressure. <laughs> now, most jobs are going to have some form of multitasking, but yeah, air traffic control, uh, that, that's a whole different level when it comes to it. When it comes to like people's lives at stake. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's see. What's it? Flight attendant. Let's see. So. Airplane mechanics make 10k a month take home. No, oh, that wouldn't surprise me because as an air, I mean, once again, being an aircraft mechanic, you got to make sure that plane is not going to break down. It's, you're not going to end up having a blown engine or a screw coming out. <laughs> so that would also be a very stressful job and one where you can't be going to work half asleep. I've always wondered that, like. Oh, I hope those air, I hope those airline mechanics weren't slacking during their shift because yeah, it's, that's got to be yeah, anything involving air travel. You've got to be on your toes. It's it's not like one of those jobs where you can just be like, oh, I'm dra I'm dragging today, guys. Oh, I just didn't get enough sleep. Uh, no, that <laughs> yeah, so that's. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So yeah, that was that was a fun, that was a. I like that. That was actually kind of fun. That was a fun little trivia section there. I hope hopefully you guys do. Hopefully that happens. Hopefully I will see more of that. That was actually pretty cool. So whoever whoever did that, whoever threw that trivia question out there, who was? Oh yeah, that was jo Johan Wilder. Thank you, Johan Wilder, for adding a little bit of entertainment to this live stream by throwing in some trivia that's always that's always a good thing to kind of help spice spice things up okay so i figure i'm gonna stay on here until i get close to the parking lot guys so let's see i got anyone else here i got uh v-ray he what he gets uh, oh i got a super chat here super chat here so, looks like I got a super chat. Who is a super chat guy? Yes, Steve B. Thank you, Steve B. Awesome. Oh, Steve B. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that, oh, that is, that is, whew, that is generous. Oh, you got to give Steve B a great shout out. That's probably one of my biggest, one, that's probably one of the biggest super things I've gotten in quite a while. Thanks. I know that's going to definitely help. Uh, treat myself for some good Christmas uh, uh, feasting. Oh yeah, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated, Steve B. Oh, yes, oh yes, a week of groceries. Oh, that's gonna be, oh, now I can get myself some of my favorite things to eat, like pasta, sushi, <laughs> yes, sushi. And I gotta, I gotta remember too, the stores are closed. On Christmas Day, so I have to make sure I do my shopping uh, on Christmas Eve, so I'm not without food on Christmas Day. Otherwise, I'm going to be eating at. I think there's very few places open on Christmas Day, 
uh, I mean, I guess I could go to the ski area and eat, but no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think uh, Denny's are open on Christmas Day, but no, I don't want to be eating Denny's. I want to have a good, a good home-cooked meal. So once again, thank you, Steve B. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I am nearing, I'm getting close to the bottom here, guys. All right, see if I can go back to my chat here. So it looks like, oh, interesting. So it looks like JF is saying, okay. Okay, so yeah, wow, very, yes, inspirational. Yes, thank you. Yes, very generous. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, I was like, whoa, I was like, I, that like, whew, that's, whew, yeah. So yeah, thank you very much for that. That's going to be, yeah, that is, oh, happy holiday, yeah. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all of you. And once again, thank you, Steve B. Ooh, yeah. nice. All right, guys, I am nearing the bottom here. I figure this is probably a good time. It's probably a good time for me to uh, start kind of wrapping things up here. But yeah, thank Oh, yeah, much, much appreciated, much appreciated. Oh, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's interesting. So BB is an interior designer. Uh, it is a, it's a, because it's a creative field. Okay, yeah, I mean, interior designing. Yeah, I would think that certain certain fields out there, especially for those who like to be creative, are certainly going to be more attractive to those types of individuals. Which would make me think that people who like have like an artist, like a good uh, thing with being an artist, or like who really like designing would probably be good like at like interior designing, graphic designing, web developer. Cause I would think being a web developer oftentimes involves, you know, being really creative. And you also have to know some programming, depending if you're making like an interactive uh, web page or website, you have to know JavaScript. But I think if you're just making a regular web page and designing like a simple web page or a web page like a home landing page. I think HTML, from what I know, is pretty much what you need. And HTML is really not that hard to learn, surprisingly. I actually took an HTML class a couple years back. I don't really remember much of it, but it probably wouldn't take me long to, to pick it back up again. Yeah, so that's... <laughs> yeah, an HVVAC. So yeah, interesting to see some of the... Okay, the winners. The winners are saying, okay, 100 pull-ups next. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So, uh, with filming, like, filming and gyms. A lot of gyms now do not like people filming. I think it's because a lot of people don't like to be in the background of someone's uh, film. So, a lot of gyms have been prohibiting filming but I did find one gym in Bellingham they're open 24 hours and they allow filming as long as you're cognizant of people that may be in the background so they're 24 hours I haven't been in a gym but it's like one of the bigger gyms in Bellingham they've got like a they've got a whole lot more equipment than the gym I've been going to and yeah I mean I suppose I could uh, do some pull-ups it's like I mentioned I haven't been going to the gym for a little bit because I'm trying to see how many vertical feet I can get for the month of December. So I'm gonna be a little rusty. So you may have to wait on me doing 100 pull-ups and I'm not gonna be able to do them all in one set. So I might be a little bit for that one. <laughs> hey, Ellen Oakland. Hey, how you doing, Ellen? All right. So we got Ellen. And then we got Leo06, Sneaky Ninja. Sneaky Ninja is in the house. It is starting to rain out here and it is getting dark. And I am just like moseying along down here, but yeah, it's getting dark. Uh, this is this is fully uh, dusk now. Hey, Sneaky Ninja. Uh, I saw something down there. Uh, that was uh, car's headlights. Yeah, this is this is a good time for me to be wrapping things up. I would not want to be going upwards right now because it's getting dark and it's getting a little out here 
All right. I used to, so Kenneth, you can bench press 300 pounds. I actually used to be able to bench close to 300. That was back when I was like in Pensacola though. I don't know what, I don't know what I can bench now, but it's probably pretty embarrassing. But hey, I'm gonna take you guys for the ride and I might see how much I can bench. It's probably not gonna be very much. Hey, Christopher Rasmussen. Thank you for joining. Did I get, did I miss anyone here? Cause it looks like I'm gonna be inspirational girl, girl, okay, yeah, I think inspirational girl, making sure I give a shout out to you. Cause I know there's some people in here I may, may have missed, but it's, my phone's starting to get a little wet. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go all the way back here. I know I got to see Louie. I know Uncle Teddy was on here a little earlier. Mario Candelo. Uh, Mario Candelo says, I can't also do really well with ladies oh thank you <laughs> thank you for the extra motivation there okay we got Olo Olo was here as well AA we got AA Joey Contiguo Kenneth Fairchild yeah BB Joseph Cupper hey Joseph Cupper hope you hope you're doing good in Western New York State Hope you're doing good. And we got Sci-Fi Master. I think I went and we got Jordan Luke. I think I got most everyone on here. I got AJ. We got AJ. AJ, in case I missed it, I'm doing pretty well right now. Hope you're doing the same. So I'm just, I'm just kind of going back there comment. We got Monster. We got Grotesque. Subhuman 3. And I believe that's... Every, oh, Himini. We got Himini and JF. So that's everyone that it's let me go back to. I'm just gonna kind of round it out for the last few minutes here. But it's been another joyous live stream. Once again, Steve B, thank you so much. Uh, I'm in deep gratitude, deep appreciation for that. That's gonna help out a lot. Now I, now I can look forward to having some delicious meals over the next few days. So really much appreciate that. Sneaky Ninja, happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas to you in case I don't come back until after the Christmas day. Well, I'll, I'll probably, I might, I might do another live uh, before or maybe on Christmas day. I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but yeah. Hey, Ch hey Chess Rockwell, Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas to all the rest of you. Shout out to all of you. I'm just kind of waiting for the parking lot to clear out a little bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of just walk a little bit back and forth. Hey, Johan Wilder, JF, Merry Christmas, JF, Kenneth, BB, Merry Christmas to all of you. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of stay on here about another minute and then call it stay on probably for about, I'll just make it 57 minutes. Okay, I think the last car, uh, no, there's still one car left. Yeah, there's one car left. Hey. Okay. Yeah, Kenneth, uh, well, my parents, my mom is actually in Colombia right now. Colombia, South America. So that's going to be a little difficult for me to visit them down there. Yeah, don't think I'm going to be able to go to Colombia. Not, not this year. All right, so... Okay, so I've got, I'll be on here for two more. I'll be, I'll say, I'll, I'll make it 57 minutes, guys. I'm going to cut it at 57 minutes. All right. So I think I'll do this now. It's been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Much love to all of you out there. I'll be on here for a couple more minutes, and then I'll be heading back home. Okay. So yeah, I can, I can feel it is time for me to... To eat dinner i can feel like i'm kind of like what they call that word bonking even though i wasn't pushing myself i expended a lot of calories yesterday so that's probably why i'm bonking right like i'm not, not i'm not really truly bonking but i can feel like just like that energy depletion so i'm just kind of saying my final goodbyes and then that'll be it that'll be it all right 
Alright, so yeah. So yeah, nur oh yeah, nursing. They have to do yeah, nursing. That can be a challenging field as well. I mean, because you've got you gotta deal with patients. You gotta deal I mean you're you're pretty much like a patient's lifeline sometimes. It's like life and death. You've got drama. You've got I mean uh what I mean it's you've got like insane working hours. Sometimes you gotta like stay like you'll be up for like over 24 hours and you're having to yeah do like you run back and forth making sure patients are doing okay sometimes you're having to do life-saving measures on little to no sleep yeah it's definitely it's definitely a challenging field so you got to give a shout out you got to give it to the to people who are like first responders firefighters police officers nurse nurses all those people out there like you know they their job is a lot more difficult than what we realize and i've watched a few youtube videos and it's kind of made me appreciate more of what those guys have to go through especially like when they show up to like a car accident scene and so forth but that's another topic for another day i've got myself 30 and i've got myself 30 more seconds and then i'm going to be calling it good so take care everyone out there have a happy joyous day happy holidays merry christmas and I'll be coming back at you guys soon enough. Once again, another shout out to Steve B and Sneaky Ninja, BB Ola. Thank you guys for being active in the chat. That's been nice, fun to see. Oh, yeah. And Johan Wilder, thank you for that trivia. That was fun. All right, guys. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, peace out.